This tutorial is to do with the accounting process. It's important that you keep everything into perspective and this tutorial is designed to help you identify the steps involved in the whole accounting process. But this tutorial is designed to take for the whole process from when a transaction occurs all the way to when um, accounts are reported. So let's see where the whole accounting process begins. It begins when a transaction occurs. Now there's four different types that I'm going to show you. Um, and each of these um, events um, is documented by a source document, which is a um, lo like a contract that you end into, that two parties to that contract, if you like, um, enter into. Okay, so first of all, that you would have seen um, a receipt when you pay for something um, then you, a receipt is issued so you as a customer get the original um, receipt and the copy is kept by the person that sold you the goods or service. This is an old-fashioned check when we pay um, something um, in this instance it's um, to the Wikimedia Foundation for a sum of $100 um, this is a document that can um, highlight a cash payment occurring. These days a lot of these transactions occur electronically. When we have a credit transaction, i.e. cash hasn't yet passed, we have a tax invoice. Uh, you can see here uh, we have all these items here, a number of cameras and of course the GST is added. But sometimes what happens if there's a um, return for something, we have a thing called an adjustment note. Right, so that again is based on a credit transaction, not a cash transaction. So that's just summarising what happens at the first stage of a transaction occurring and a source document is generated. The next thing is we generate a entry into a thing called journal where um, all the same type of entries are entered um, into a chronological order and summarised and collated um, to be posted to the next step. Here we have uh, an example of a general journal entry. Remember that for our course all the um, um, entries are going to be entered in the general journal entry and we have a debit and a credit item which will be shown to you how to do that in a separate tutorial. It then moves along into um, posting those journal transactions into a thing called ledgers. Okay, And here we have an example of a number of of ledgers, cash at bank, and they have certain rules. They have debit and credit rules. You've got to know what to put on the on the debit side and credit side, and what account and so forth. That again has been in, explained to you in another tutorial. Once we have reached um, the end of the month and done our posting to the ledgers, what we want to do is to summarise all the final balances in a thing called trial balance. And here's um, a pro forma of a um, trial balance. Right? So we can work out what the final balances are. And this um, forms um, the basis to start our end of period reporting. But before we do that, there's some last minute adjustments to be made. Now this again is covered in another chapter, but there's some last minute or you know, on, on the day type of adjustments to ensure that we have a proper profit recording um, that occurs and there's a whole lot of things that must be adjusted. It's almost like a bit of a spring clean before you present um, on, on the final day. And lastly, um, we go to what we call end of period reports and that's our sole purpose um, of accounting. Uh, the first purpose is to work out what um, profit we have, okay, based on the income statement, and secondly, we have a balance sheet um, to see what assets we've got, what liabilities got, and what owner's equity is is left with. The other statement, which is not illustrated here, is a cash flow statement, which shows all the um, cash flow activities for the whole year. That explains the whole accounting process, from when a transaction occurs to when these transactions are recorded um, and reported on. Hopefully that's been a useful oversight. Thanks for listening.